So folks, in this video, I want to look at uh, question number 13.3.47 from our textbook. In this case, this corresponds currently to um, question number six in this homework set. And uh, if you can do question number six, then you can do the, the questions that, that stem from that. What we want to do in this problem here is we want to imagine maybe a block of wood or something sitting on a plane and we've got the angle of that plane with the positive x-axis. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to take this force due to gravity of that box sitting on the plane and we want to break up, we want to break it up into component forces but not in relation to a coordinate system on the xy plane but maybe, if you will, a coordinate system that's sitting on the um, actual incline plane itself. What do I mean by that? Let's look at a picture of this problem here. So we would imagine some sort of, let's go ahead and give ourselves our original XY coordinate system here. It's kind of ugly. There we go. And then we've got some sort of incline plane here. Uh, let me exaggerate that slightly because this is the angle pi over 3. So it, uh, Didn't do it. There we go. So we've got some sort of incline plane here and this is the angle at pi over 3 that we're told and we have sitting on here uh, on this plane a box okay. and this box uh, has a force acting on it and that is the force due to gravity so there's the force due to gravity but what we'd like to do in this problem is we could we could for instance take this gravitational force and it's actually already broken up into just a y component because it only has a downward component to it but we could talk about you know here's our here's our reference vector i hat and here's our reference vector j hat and we could break it down into components of i and j but instead what we'd like to do is we'd like to put a coordinate system on this inclined plane right here that matches the inclined plane so that picture is already getting a little bit cluttered let me just zoom in on that aspect of it so here's that plane and then I'm going to stop drawing the box and here's our original force oops come on here's our original force due to gravity here I'm kind of exaggerating the size of that and what we want to do is we want to create a coordinate system sort of right here and for us to do that what we mean is we're going to have a vector pointing in this direction here and so this axis is going to be our, our uh, normal axis and this axis right here is going to be our parallel axis so this axis right here you can see it's the parallel axis because it's parallel to this green inclined plane and this is our normal axis and we call it that because it's perpendicular uh, we use the word normal sometimes for perpendicular it's perpendicular to that green plane so what we'd like to do is we'd like to break this force right here uh, force due to gravity into both a normal force and a perpendicular force that is we want to break it up into two component forces let's see I'm running out of colors here let's let's try purple see if that looks no we'll do orange so uh, we want to have a force that's running along this way that we'll call the force parallel and we want to have a force that's running along this normal axis in this case it won't be up because our force due to gravity is downwards so we'll have a a uh, normal force this way so what we want to do is we want to compute those two um, force components the the force normal and the uh, force parallel what I'd like to do is one more time because again normally you wouldn't label all of this on a picture and so I want to just one more time simplify this down even simpler so we just see those three forces so here we have our force due to gravity which is our original force that this thing was given in terms of and that should make sense because that's something that's easy to compute and then we will have our force uh, parallel and I call it that because it's parallel to the plane and our force normal that we're going to have and we call it that because it's perpendicular to the plane now in some cases these forces might actually you know I've drawn this in this uh, uh, in the negative normal direction it could actually be in the positive normal direction and likewise I've drawn the force parallel in the negative parallel direction but it could be in the positive direction so but if you've got to wait this is how this is how you break up those forces okay hopefully now we understand the question about breaking this uh, vertical force into the components of parallel and normal according to the plane that we were given remember that plane came with the angle pi over 3 so let me just for our final picture let's just put that pi over 3 there so we still have that Okay, 
So how are we going to do this? There's a there's a correct sequence to the way we should look at this. So first of all, our force due to gravity, this original force is really could be thought of as the sum of these two component forces. So that's going to be equal to the force parallel plus the force normal. Remember the normal one's the one perpendicular to the plane. Okay. So let me ask the question, which of these two forces, the force parallel or the force normal, do you feel like you're ready to find? Based on, the, based on the things we've been doing in this section, which of these two do you feel like you, would be, you have the tools to find given that you know the angle of this plane? Well, maybe you feel like you could find the force normal, and there is a way to do it. It would have to involve finding some complementary angles, etc. But I feel like we've got all the tools we need to find the force parallel, because what I want to do is I want to think about this as a vector, and then we could say that the force, so if this is some vector v here, then what we could say is that the force parallel is simply the projection of the force due to gravity onto that vector v there. If I were to compute, if I were to project this blue force onto the green uh, vector formed by that plane, that will give me the force parallel. And this is what we've spent the last couple of problems learning how to compute. So I'm going to use the projection of the force due to gravity onto this plane to compute, compute that force parallel. So here we go. First of all, we better give ourselves um, a vector v. And any vector v that has at least the same direction will do for this, right? Like regardless of how long I make this vector v here, the projection vector, when I project uh, the blue vector onto whatever that green vector is, that shadow will be the same regardless of the length of the original vector v, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and let vector v be this vector right here. It will be the cosine of pi over three, and it will be the sine of pi over three for its two x and y components. Hopefully it makes sense why you would do that, because if I thought about this as being a right triangle, then I could compute these sides the way I do. And if I think of V as having unit length, then the hypotenuse, the length of V here, is 1. And so this component right here is just the, co the sine of pi over 3. That gives me this piece. And this component right here is just the cosine of pi over 3 by, by our trigonometry that we've always done. So that gives us this vector v is equal to uh, 1 half comma the square root of 3 over 2. And now I feel like I've got everything I need to be able to compute this projection. So folks, normally you wouldn't write all this stuff out if you were just tackling this problem. This is where you would start the problem. And you would say, OK, if I want to find the force parallel, that's equal to the projection of vector uh, the, the vector that's the force due to gravity onto this vector v that's representing the inclined plane. And we know that we can compute that as uh, this vector dotted with this vector all over this vector dotted with itself times this vector. So that's that formula we've been using for the projection of a vector onto v. And so if I go ahead and actually write that out, what we'd have is, well, we know our force due to gravity vector is 0, negative 4. That was given to us in the problem. And we're going to dot that with 1 half comma the square root of 3 over 2 divided by, and here I'll write this out even though there's not really a reason to, 1 half uh, comma square root of 3 over 2 dotted with 1 half comma the square root of 3 over 2. And of course, this whole large fraction gives me a scalar, and I'm going to multiply that scalar to the vector v, which is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So it's a mess, but it, we know how to compute each, com each little piece of this mess, so it's nothing to worry about. OK, so if we do this dot product here, notice that gives me minus 4 square root of 3 divided by 2, because that's 0 times a half. And so I just have the second um, coefficients multiplied together for that dot product. And then here, you can compute this if you like, but because I chose v to be a unit vector, and I know that a unit vector has magnitude 1, and this is the square of the magnitude, I know this is going to come out to be 1. If you don't believe me, just compute that dot product there and see that, yes, in fact, it is 1 uh, times 1 half 
comma square root of three over two. And if we go ahead and actually just, let's go ahead and multiply this through, what we would end up with is uh, minus the square root of three for the first component. And let's see here, and um, uh, three for that second component there. Oops, and I dropped the sign there, minus three for that second component there. So our force perpendicular, or excuse me, our force parallel is this vector right here. Okay. So at this point, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to find these two component forces, the force parallel, we just did that, and we also want the force normal. We don't really have any hard computations left because we know that the force due to gravity, our original force, is just the force parallel plus the force normal. So let me just recopy that down here. So we just said that the force due to gravity is equal to the uh, force uh, parallel plus the force normal. And we want to find this force normal, but we know that this is the vector 0 comma negative 4. And we just computed this to be the vector right up here, minus the square root of 3 comma negative 3. And so if we want to find the two components of the force normal, the uh, normal component in the x direction and the normal component in the y direction, we can just do elementary algebra. Meaning, I know that when I add negative square root of 3 to this component, I need to get 0. So that tells us the force normal in the x direction has to be uh, positive square root of 3. And I know that when I add this, uh, sorry, when I add negative 3 to this component, I need to get negative 4. So that tells me the, the normal component in the y direction has to be negative 1. And so I know that my force normal vector is the vector square root of 3 comma negative 1. And so if we return to our original question, we were asked to find these various forces, and I've gone ahead and uh, completed that for us. Let's see if we can paste this in here. And there I went ahead, I entered in. This was what we found to be the force parallel. You will always find the force parallel first because it's simply the projection of the given force onto the plane that we're working with. And then we can find the force normal uh, by just looking, by reminding ourselves that the force due to gravity of this object is the force uh, parallel plus the force normal. These two vectors have to add up to be this other vector. And so that was our force due to gravity there. But we always find this one through sort of a subtraction problem. So folks, I know that's been a lot of material in this first week. Um, there's, a, there's been a lot to cover. I know this could be a little bit overwhelming, but just stick with it and do let me know what questions you have and I'll happily uh, uh, provide some more um, explanations if needed. Thank you very much.